This is a practice exercise on page 308 in the textbook. We're going to go through and draw three possible Lewis structures for an ion, assign formal charges to all the atoms in that ion, and then try to figure out which Lewis structure is dominant based on those formal charges. So first thing we do every time we draw a Lewis structure is we need to think about how many electrons we have to work with. So again, you're going to look at the periodic table, figure out what group each of these atoms is in, and that group number is going to tell you how many valence electrons. So nitrogen is going to bring five valence electrons. Carbon is going to bring four valence electrons. Oxygen is going to bring six valence electrons. And that negative charge means that we have one extra valence electron to work with. So we're going to have a total of 16 valence electrons to use when we draw this Lewis structure. So when we start, we're just going to put these in order. So nitrogen attached to carbon attached to oxygen. So that already cost us four electrons. So two here, four here. Then we're going to fill in octets on the outside first. So again, we've got two, four electrons there. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, 13, 14, 15, 16. So I've used all six of my electrons, but I can't complete everyone's octets. If I look, the octet on oxygen is complete. It's got two, four, six, eight. The octet on nitrogen is complete, two, four, six, eight. But the octet on carbon is not complete. Carbon only feels like it's got four electrons. So we've got to figure out how to draw this structure so that everyone feels like they've got eight. So one way to do it is for oxygen to share a pair and for nitrogen to share a pair. So if I draw that Lewis structure out, it's gonna look like nitrogen double bonded to the carbon, which is then double bonded to the oxygen. So oxygen's only got two non-bonding pairs and nitrogen's only got two non-bonding pairs. And if I check my electrons here, nitrogen feels like it's got eight, two, four, six, eight. Carbon feels like it's got eight, two, four, six, eight and oxygen also feels like it's got eight, two, four, six, eight. So that is one possible Lewis structure. I need to make sure to put it into brackets with a charge on the outside. But we know that there are three possible Lewis structures. So I'm gonna draw my resonance structures because what I'm essentially drawing is three different ways to draw the same structure. And I need to think about where else the electrons could go. So instead of splitting those shared electrons as a double bond on each side, something that I could do is I could have oxygen share one more pair, and I could have nitrogen share one less pair. And what this would end up looking like is the nitrogen atom single bonded to the carbon, which is then triple bonded to the oxygen. Oxygen only has one pair to itself, and now nitrogen would have three pairs to itself. And I want to put that in brackets with the charge. And again, if I check what's going on here, nitrogen feels like it's got two, four, six, eight electrons. Carbon still feels like it's got eight. And oxygen still feels two, four, six, eight electrons. I can also do the opposite thing, just shifting the double bonds back in the opposite direction. So this time I'm going to make nitrogen share, and I'm going to give one back to oxygen. And that would make it look like the nitrogen is triple bonded, while the oxygen is single bonded. So nitrogen would only have one pair, and oxygen would now have three non-bonding pairs. And again, I want to put that in brackets. Okay, again, if I check this, nitrogen still feels like it's got two, four, six, eight, carbon still feels like it's got eight, and oxygen still feels like it's got eight. So these are all valid Lewis structures, but I can think about them in terms of the formal charge to figure out which one is the best. So in order to do formal charge, first thing I want to think about is how many valence electrons everyone has. So to indicate the valence electrons, I'm going to use the color purple. So purple are my valence electrons. So we know that nitrogen brought five, carbon brought four, oxygen brought six. The next thing we wanna do is we wanna figure out how many electrons each of them actually has if I split the bonds exactly in half. So the way I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna to add together all of the non-bonding electrons and exactly half of the bonding electrons for each atom. 
So if I start with the nitrogen all the way on the left hand side, this nitrogen has two non-bonding electrons and there are a total of six bonding, but half of six is three plus two more is five. So this is going to have five. If I do it for carbon, there are eight bonding electrons around carbon. Half of that is four. There are zero non-bonding. So that would give me four. If I do this for oxygen, there's only two bonding. So half of that is one plus all of the non-bonding. One plus six is going to be seven. And then I can add that all up. And we just subtract these from each other. So nitrogen brought five, feels like it has five. So it's got a formal charge of zero. Carbon brought four, feels like it's got four, so it's got a formal charge of zero. Oxygen brought six, feels like it's got seven, so it has a formal charge of negative one. We can keep doing that for the next set. So if I look at this one, the way I had it drawn, my nitrogen had two sets of non-bonding electrons, so four total non-bonding electrons, four total bonding. Half of that is two, plus two more from here, two more from here. This nitrogen really feels like it has six. Again, that carbon in the center is gonna feel like it has four because it's got eight bonding electrons surrounding it. Half of that is four. That oxygen with the double bond has four bonding electrons. Half of that is two plus two more, plus two more is a total of six that that oxygen has. So again, if I do the subtraction there, five minus six gives me a negative one formal charge on the nitrogen, four minus four gives me a zero formal charge on the carbon, and six minus six gives me a zero formal charge on that oxygen. And let's do the last set. So this nitrogen has six non-bonding electrons. Half of this means that it feels like it's got seven electrons around it. Carbon again has eight bonding electrons, half of eight is four. The oxygen on the right has six bonding electrons, half of that is three, plus the two that are non-bonding gives us a total of five. So if I do the formal charges here, that nitrogen has a formal charge of minus two, carbon again has a formal charge of zero, and now my oxygen has a formal charge of plus one. And again, when we look at these formal charges, the sum of all of these formal charges should be equal to negative one. The reason it needs to be equal to negative one is because the total charge on this molecule is negative one. So that's a way I can check myself to make sure that I've done all of these formal charges correctly. So the last thing I need to figure out is based on the formal charges, which of these Lewis structures is dominant, which of these is the best. So the way I can figure this out is formal charges are better when more electronegative elements have negative formal charges. So if I look again at these numbers, I can see that carbon always had a zero formal charge, so I'm not really going to be looking at carbon to figure out which one's the best. Now my nitrogen either had a formal charge of zero, minus one, or minus two, and oxygen was either minus one, zero, or plus one. So between oxygen and nitrogen, you can check your electronegativity values, and you'll see that oxygen is the more electronegative element, so this is going to be the best structure when oxygen has a negative formal charge. So that's this first structure I drew here. This is my dominant structure. And again, I can tell that this is my dominant structure. So the first one I drew is my dominant structure because in that one, the formal charge on oxygen is negative and that's the best possible way to have the formal charges since oxygen is the most electronegative element. So again, when you do these, you have to draw your Lewis structure put all your electrons in just like you normally would, and then you try to figure out how many valence electrons each element brought. That was his first row. And then you use all of the non-bonding electrons on an element plus half of the bonding electrons to figure out how many electrons each atom feels like it has if those bonds were split exactly in half. 
Then you subtract those two values and you'll get the formal charge. Then when we compare the formal charges, the best Lewis structure is gonna have a negative formal charge on the most electronegative element. Now the absolute best structure would have no formal charge on any of the atoms, but that's not possible in this case. Since our structure had a negative charge overall, we knew we we're gonna have some formal charges somewhere. So if it's not possible to have everything being zero, then the best option is when your most electronegative elements have negative formal charges.